Well, we got, uh, let's see here. Hey. It's about 11, 11 to 1 I got right now. So we got Kathy Davis hey. here of Davis and, and Travellini LLC. And she's got some good updates for us today. So are you ready to get started, Kathy? Okay. I, well, yeah. Glad somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> my, my colleagues are questioning whether I have good updates. <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah, good. Yeah, we do have one piece of very good news mm -hmm. for St. Charles people. And I'm going to hand the phone to Chris and let him tell you where he was this morning. Okay, great. All right. Well, for the first uh, time in a couple months, I had to see if my suit still fit. Um, so uh, <laughs> I was in court, and you know, I took my first uh, written possession judgment since mid-March. Um, there was some tears. Uh, I was told that Trump told her she couldn't be evicted, so I had to get past that. Uh, that's something that you know I think every tenant is going to have to deal with. As we talked about, I think last week we were hopeful that the judges, the judges will educate them or give some sort of speech to give i don't know whether she believed me or not but uh she see, i think she begrudgingly said she might not have read the fine print in the cares act and uh which uh, i was dubious whether she read the cares act to begin with but uh mm -hmm. you know we did get through it um she is going to move out or will or should be able to get the sheriff which is st charles i it's my understanding the sheriff is at least hopefully moving i think they can do whatever they want on st charles but there, for those of you who may be going to court on your own, there are, you know, kind of given an idea of when things open up, what I had to deal with. I had to wear a mask. Um, they took my temperature when I came in the courtroom. They took down which case I was there on and only, only authorizing people who were actually on the case to be there. They checked in, asked me some series of questions to see whether I was sick. Um, and then they let me in. Uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty empty. Everyone's kind of keeping their distance, uh, you know. Uh, I washed, you know, we all wore masks. I washed my hands after exchanging pens. I think I threw the pen away. So, I mean, that's the kind of precautions that we are uh, trying to take. Uh, but it was pretty, pretty empty. And that's the way St. Charles is going to be, at least for the next month. They're only allowing landlord tenant cases in St. Charles through June 12th. After that, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but I think they'll start slowly letting in other cases. It'll be staggered. There was only two attorneys allowed on my time slot or my half hour time slot. And um, I think that's how they're gonna do it for the time being. Um, I guess, do you want me to talk about the city now or do you want to? Yeah. Uh, so the city, we had, uh, we have less good news. Uh, we have news, but less, we're going, every time we talk to the judges, I feel like we're getting, we. we we're getting further and further away from where we want to be, but at least they are trying to have a plan. Uh, in the city, starting in June, they're going to have video dockets. I, my first docket is on June 3rd. It will be on WebEx. They have sent out notices to all the defendants telling them this is how you log in. They type in this website or this call this phone number. It's going to be a disaster, uh, but there will be a docket. Uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of echoes, a lot of technical problems. They're not going to let us take defaults on the first docket. Not that it really matters because we're understanding there's no sheriff movement in probably until July. So it's going to be slow. We have no idea yet whenever we are. Um, it, it, they didn't say July. I'm just guessing the way they're going. I, it would have to be June 15th at the earliest based upon the Supreme Court orders. They're not being as flexible with these as yet as we would like. Uh, we are trying hard and arguing and submitting memos and working back channels where we can to try to get more problems in. I'm dealing with a lot of apparently tenants being stayed at home. A lot of them are going crazy. So I'm actually working. If you have any problems, my, my current thing is I'm working with the city councilor's office to try to see if they can force the police to go out to these properties and arrest people. Um, I've talked to him, the lead attorney down there, Rich Zakora, and he seems to uh, be open to coordinating with me to getting police officers out there. I've had clients who the police are just not answering the phones, not agreeing to go out anywhere. But I've got, he's, I haven't, we've been playing phone tag, but he seems open to working with us to start arresting people um, with the courts being closed. So that's my current avenue since the judges are being a little bit reticent to let us into court because the Supreme Court of Missouri did not think to ask uh, for emergency evictions to be included in the emergency phase of court openings. Um, the, after that, July is when we'll start having in-person maybe with the city. So it's still our advice to 
go ahead and file if you need to file, you know, but work with people when you can. Uh, I think I'll get back to Kathy for now. So I was actually in the city courthouse on Wednesday. Um, I was down there for a private lunch with some judges and some court personnel, and they took my temperature but didn't ask me any questions. I, I think they were really confused that I was even there, but I had a court order allowing me to go, so they let me in. Um, and I was also at the Department of Revenue in Jefferson City yesterday, and they asked me questions but did not take my temperature. So there seems to be, um, you know, be prepared for anything with respect to what you're going to have when you go into a government building. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you a, a brief story about one of the people who was at this lunch was a law enforcement person. And he was telling us that basically what they're doing now when they have a domestic complaint is they drive to the address and they bullhorn out the window. One of you is coming out with a suitcase or you're both going to jail. <laughs> and usually within a few minutes, someone, yes, someone comes trailing out with a suitcase. And that's how they're handling domestic disputes in the city at this point. It's hard to blame them, you know, for not wanting to get in contact, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting system, I guess I will say. We, in my neighborhood in the city, we have a, a apartment building that has an Airbnb on the first floor. And there's been raucous parties there. There was a shooting from the people once. I mean, there's been hundreds of people out in the street and the police won't come for that. <laughs> so we're on our own. Um, I'm gonna hand you to Christine now so that she can tell you about the, the Zoom dockets in the county and the supposed dates when they're gonna resume. Good morning. Uh, there's not much. <laughs> Uh, they are going to use Zoom video for now. Uh, there has been some discussions that the Supreme Court orders were saying they should only be using WebEx or WebNX. But I talked with my judge yesterday. He said they have been zo using Zoom in St. Louis County and it's been working well for them and that their plan is to use it for now. They may switch over, but for now they're going to use Zoom. We've gotten notices that at least uh, starting June the 4th, they're going to have a, a Zoom video docket. The cases on that docket are, are the cases that we had already had court dates that got canceled. Uh, these were cases that were on our, I believe, March 26th docket that got canceled. And so, so far, no new cases. Um, or on yet. Supposedly, although I'm not getting a straight answer, all the new stuff I've been filing since March is supposed to have a June 18th court date. I don't know whether that is true or not at this point. Uh, if we do get that date, those summonses will need to be issued to us to send out for service next Thursday. So I should have some kind of definite answer. Um, it, because those summons will have to go out. The, as far as I know, and I, I'm not, I was just given a copy of what's being sent to the defendants. They're being sent a notice uh, with instructions that there is no in-court hearings. It will be by Zoom. There's instructions on how they should call in or um, somehow register to uh, get in on this Zoom video court hearing. There are uh, notices within the instructions that if they do not uh, appear by Zoom or otherwise call into the court, that a default judgment can be taken against them. Now, different from the city, the county supposedly is going to allow us to take a default judgment the first time. Uh, that, of course, is always subject to change because it, it seems like they're they're changing daily, but supposedly but the sheriff executions are still on hold we don't have any timeline of when they will resume those uh, so even if we can take a judgment on june 4th i'm not sure when we'd be able to execute on it um, if they haven't lifted those stay orders on sheriff executions yet um trying to think of anything else <laughs> I don't, I think that's it for now. Um, 
not much different from what we knew last week, but at least we do know now that we do get to use the June 4th date they were saying before for this first Zoom video. They're going to have a, a practice run next week. Uh, I had requested from my judge that he talk to the other judges to see if they would allow some of the attorneys to be in on this practice run to kind of work out some of the kinks. So uh, I think it's going to be a disaster, like Chris said. But, you know, we've got to start somewhere, and at least we're getting this. We're get, there is progress in that we at least get in there, however disastrous it may turn out to be. So we have to start somewhere, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to give you back to Kathy. Okay. Thanks, Chris and Christine. So I, I guess my takeaway for today is we still don't know for sure when we're going to be able to actually evict somebody, but there is movement towards figuring out ways to do that that will be safe and that will be effective for the for us and our clients. Um, you know, a big key thing is when the sheriff is going to start doing evictions again, <coughs> and um, I'm continuing to advocate to Chris and Christine. They're tired of hearing me say it, but and to all of you that. If you have a suit on file, let's see if we can help each other get with the tenant and negotiate a consent judgment, because that's likely to be the quickest path to judgment. Um, and then at least when the sheriff does start up again, you'll have a judgment and you'll be ready to execute. We had a practice call this week with the city, um, with our, our DACA judge in the city, Chris and I were both on it, and it was a little crazy, but it was and it was just attorneys i you know i continue to have the huge concern that a lot of these tenants are not going to figure out how to get on webex or zoom how to get into the docket room or whatever you call the virtual area they're not going to figure out how to work it they're all going to talk at once they're going to get muted and they're going to hang up i mean i think it's going to be you know it's been a learning curve for us and i think it's going to be a real real challenge for them so um but we're, like I said, I think everybody's trying to move forward. They get that we need to have these court dates and we need to get these things resolved. I'm very hopeful that when the summonses start to get issued, which for some of our county cases will be next week, that tenants will then start coming to the table when they see that they are getting sued, you know, when they get served. But we don't really know. A lot of them seem to be just hunkering down. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them are, are, are acting the way uh, Chris's defendant in court acted, where, you know, you can't evict me. I'm going to sit here until you can evict me, and I'm not going to do any deals or communicate or do anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has been the consensus, at least with a lot of my clients on, on the cases that I've already filed, but we don't have summonses or court dates yet. Uh, I've got a couple where we've done consent judgments already that I filed, um, but a lot of them uh, are just not communicating with the landlord at all mm -hmm. in, in any way. They're just ignoring them. And, and so at this point, there's not much we can do. That's why, like Kathy said, maybe once these summonses go out and they see there is a court date, Hopefully that's going to prompt them to contact their landlord or maybe contact us. At least part of the instructions in the St. Louis County video um, uh, court appearance that's being sent to the defendants does have a paragraph in there about, uh, about the defendants being urged to contact the landlord or the uh, attorney for the landlord to attempt to work out some kind of a resolution. So hopefully it, <laughs> with that instruction coming from the court, that's gonna to prompt them to do something, or at least. We're hoping. Um, and I wanna remind you, in case there's anybody new on the call, or you know, this is all confusing anyway, that the CARES Act moratorium on evictions has to do with if you have financing, you know, that's government financing, or a tenant that's subsidized under a Section 8 type of program. Mm -hmm. All other evictions can go forward. Mm -hmm. And another thing that can go forward is if you hold a note and deed of trust um, and your borrower quits paying, those foreclosures can go forward. We have non-judicial foreclosures in Missouri. We do them at the courthouse, but they're not in front of a judge or anything. So if you have someone like that that's not paying, 
they you don't have to hold off. You might want to. I'm not going to say don't, but you don't have to. And I will um, also say for the people that, for some of you who might buy notes and might, might buy at foreclosure, in the county, they're not going to let us in the lobby to do the foreclosure. So we're going to be doing them outside the building. I would expect the other trustees will be doing that also. Mm. Okay. okay, any questions? Ian has one there. Um, St. Louis City, what will not happen on the first docket? We have a court date on the on June 4th. So if you have a court date on June 4th, what they're telling us is what happen, what happens on that first docket depends a lot on whether your tenant pops up on the on the WebEx call. They've been they've all been mailed instructions on how to do so to call in. And if they, so they'll call the docket. If they, if the tenant is there, they're telling me they will continue the case to some date in July for trial with, and then instruct the tenant to reach out to the landlord should they want to work something out. Some tenants are going to stick their heads in the sand and just wait for the trial date, but the ones who want to work something out, for mine, uh, they are going to, I'm going to tell them every one of mine hey this is my phone number can you give me your phone number uh, for my clients i'll be if they if they're willing to give me their phone number i'm going to be proactively calling the tenant at that point and trying to work something out but they're just going to be some tenants that are going to you know ride the ride the rail until they until they get put out uh they said on that first day for the ones who don't show up they at this time they're not going to do defaults because they don't trust the tenants are going to be able to figure it out so they said the notice the tenants get say if you don't call in you may be defaulted but they're telling me re in reality they're not going to do that they will then pick a second date for those who don't show up i'm hopeful those dates are sooner than the trial dates meaning sometime maybe in the back end of june but i don't know for sure because they're going to send out a second notice being more forceful about what happens if you don't show up and at that point they do indicate they're willing to get grant defaults uh the now, if someone comes in a day later or calls in, I'm sure they'll be willing to set it aside pretty freely. But for ones, for the tenants who are just going to ignore this, it's going to be a second trip down there or a second call in to do it. But the, you know, it may not matter on the timeline perspective if the city sheriff isn't moving yet, then you know, or they're so backlogged as I anticipate. Even if they are June 15th, uh, they might be backlogged, and that's why if you have a tenant who's willing to do any payment plan with you, any sort of agreement with you, even if it's let me stay till the end of June so I can find a place, it might make some sense, even if you don't like that deal, because the, the you know, if, if, it's, if, if they get to court and tell you, hey, you have till July 15th for a trial date or July 5th for a trial date, then, 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 then that deal's off. Then the tenant's going to say, well, fine, I'll stay till then. So if you, you know, I told for my clients who are proactive, I had one last yesterday who took a consent judgment out to a tenant and they signed it last night that wasn't going to have court till June 17th. So now we have the consent judgment that I can file. So it's going to require a little more effort on the landlord, a um, little more practice, you know, where you should just wait for the judges and more, more effort on our end. But, you know, there is a way to do it, but it does, it, it is a strong encouragement to try to reach out and even get, you know, fairly loose settlement, uh, um, deals and things like that that the courts are willing to accept online and sign before the court date in fact they're telling us they're giving us instructions to do that to try to ease things up i can tell you that noise you hear in the background is christine sitting over here sighing she can't wait to get back to court and <laughs> people signed up for judgments and put them on the curb <laughs> <laughs> uh. Here's another question from Harry. Um, are are they posting the service on the door since people know they don't have to open the door? I know they're using their own process server and he's, uh, let's see, I have heard a lot of people in the city say or think they can't be evicted. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, they can say that all they want, but you know, wouldn't be the first time Donald Trump has said something wasn't true, right? Um, they, we are telling our special process servers, we always try for serve personal service and post. We always ask for the summons to be issued for that. Mm -hmm. But if they're uncomfortable with banging on the door, they're gonna at least post. They're, they're always gonna post unless the person is standing there, opens the door and takes the summons. So, um, you know, tenants are good at burying their head in the sand, but 
-hmm. they're going to get um at least from us a posting and a service and i think most of the landlord lawyers will will also do that and just brief review you understand if we only have posting and they don't show up on the webex or whatever we only get a possession judgment but at this point i think that's the least of our worries you know we can chase after them later or you can chase after them later if you want to for the money but um mm -hmm. i think we're at the point where we really need to get possession on some of these yeah 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 it makes sense mm -hmm. anybody else any other questions i think you did a good job keeping us up to date um, thanks hey um can you take a phone call go ahead uh -huh. um if a person has a vacancy right now what precautions should someone take to make sure that we're not getting one of these tenants that may have not have been served or who's not paying their rent you know um you know so it may not be showing up with all the delays in the court system when we go to search to see if there's an eviction filed against them is there anything that we can do to protect ourselves that's a good question i think CaseNet is fairly up to date However, there there is a little lag time between when we file the lawsuit and when they accept it. But that should only that happens before they issue the summons. So these cases should be accepting with case numbers and everything. So you should be able to use on CaseNet. I mean, it's a really good question, and I feel like the the harder times get, the more people, the better people get at frauding you. So um, be extra careful with that. Um, but yeah, it should generally appear on CaseNet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Some of them they aren't going to pay, just aren't going to pay, and they're going to be looking for a place right away. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Beware people who have cash and want to move in tomorrow. Yeah, with the furniture in the car. <laughs> right. right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, use a good screening company. Good screening I agree company. with that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of them are going to be sly, though. I think, like you say, right now is a yeah. good time to take advantage if they're one of those kind of people. They're going to use their middle name or their cousin's name, or you know. Yeah. 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 yeah we used to have them stand by the pay phones for references. You know? Right. But I would also put them on. I would also check everybody on CaseNet in addition to your good screening service and everything. Yeah. And I know that the big screening service, big not for profit in the city, told me yesterday that they are going to count unemployment towards um you know the the rent to wage ratio oh okay yeah that's that's a good thing to know right there yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay did the court ask you to show i can only see the first part of the question uh, did the courts ask you to show an affidavit that there isn't a federally backed loan on the properties yes we, we're, we've been calling them the CARES Act affidavits, and that's being required in the county. Is it required in the city, or are we just doing it? Okay, it's, re it's required in the city and county. Um, the, the county order says that you've, it's required at the time of filing, or it has to be in your petition. The city is just, you have to have it before court. So we are trying to get those from our clients um, before we file the suit, if possible. And you know, for clients that we know, um, we we can put it in the petition. If we don't know you that well, we might call you and talk to you about just to make sure because you could lose federal forbearance or you know you could get in trouble if if we file the suit for you and you have a government-backed loan. But yeah, the courts are requiring that. Okay. Thank you. And that's only until July twenty-seventh, yeah. July twenty-fifth. So it's not that much longer we have to put up with that. Okay. Yeah, the city's trying to say it's August, but they're not going to win on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That so ticks me off. <laughs> so it's July twenty fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, do, um, so I. Copy of the affidavit on the St. Louis County website for anyone okay. that's filing on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, What's Dwayne, Dwayne? So, do I hear that owning them fee simple is best? Well, fee simple is a type of of property ownership that has nothing to do with what your um, yeah. with what your financing is. We know of one attorney who's having his client sign an affidavit that one of the boxes they can check is "I own this free and clear." 
I wouldn't be doing that because that's like putting a target on your back. That's telling some, you know, slip and fall lawyer or somebody like that, that you have a piece of property that's not encumbered and then come after you. Right. So our affidavit does not say that. There's an affidavit available, a sample affidavit available on the county um, court website too, that you can look at. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Never to say you own anything free and clear, I think. <laughs> right. No, you don't want to, you don't want to give that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, don't tell them, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions uh, about the court system today? I think you did a good job keeping us up to date, like I said, and answering the Thank questions. You. Um, and we really appreciate you coming in each week, Kathy and, and Christine and Christopher. It's uh, very been very helpful for us. We enjoy doing it. I feel like Christine is an unhappy every week because she feels like we can't really tell you exact things on everything. but. It does seem to change everything. <laughs> she says, or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I think it adds a lot, really, and it does keep everybody up to date, which is really helpful. She's, she's my little impatient child. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love having you each week. <laughs> yeah, we enjoy doing it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Yeah, th yeah thank you. And um, I, I, if there's no more questions, we will let you go. We do appreciate it. Okay. We'll look forward to next week if. Uh, Anything? See you next week, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Yeah. And she's running the. She's the